Hi everyone, welcome to Bay Sunday. I'm your host, Frank Malico. Good to have you with us. We've got another great show for you today. Two authors, two nonprofits, great stories, and some folks helping out their communities. But first, as always, a pitch. If you'd like to connect with us or got a show idea out there, we'd love to hear from you. Go to cbssf.com, click on connect, and we will get you all the information, all the links to our email and social media, Facebook, Twitter, and the works. You know the drill. First up, title says it all. Please welcome the author of The Secrets of Successful Communication, A Simple Guide to Effective Encounters in Business. One review said it was a must read for an intern all the way to a CEO. Please say hi to Kevin McCartney. How are you? Hey, Frank, thank you. How are you? And we were just talking. Uh, you worked in the food business, still do, and for several years. And uh, this kind of morphed out of that, did it not? It, it did. It came out of the, a training that we developed to help teach our people how to handle customers in difficult situations and, and even managers how to handle employees in difficult situations so that the manager didn't say the wrong thing or even the employee didn't say the wrong thing in front of the customer. Uh, vocabulary, my mother always used to say, you can tell where someone's from, you can tell their education the minute they open their mouth. So it's so important, communication, really. And it is important to recognize, that's a key point of the book, is recognize what somebody else, where they're coming from. If they're using a good vocabulary, if they're using the right tone of voice, or the wrong tone of voice, if they're escalating their tone, it's very important to recognize them first where they're at before you start responding. Now you break it down uh, pretty simply. You got the big brain and you've got the little brain. Explain what that's all about. Well, the big brain is, uh, is, is up here. It's kind of the cerebrum. It's the part of the brain that's the thinking, thoughtful, calm, relaxed, in control brain. Then you have the little brain, which is right next to the mouth and it has a much quicker shot to get out, <laughs> a very insensitive, uh, careless. Unfiltered. Unfiltered is a great way to put that. Right. Uh, comment and it, it often gets us in trouble if we let the little brain speak first. See, now I got to be really careful because we anchor a morning show. And sometimes I came <laughs> from a sports background. I worked in Boston a number of years where you're almost paid for an opinion. So you'd come out and say, boy, this team really stunk up the joint. In news, you've got a, that little brain will turn on sometimes. You'll come out of a story and you want to add a comment, but you can't. You've got to keep it generic. And that's the most important thing, really. It's, you know it. You know that stuff. And the most important is yeah. remembering it when you need to remember it. Because if you know that and you forget to, the, you know, to have that filter, then that's what gets you in trouble. I worked with a weather guy in Detroit, Michigan, who had the phallus. He, he came from a military background. He was a great meteorologist. But the four-letter words that came out of that guy's mouth off camera, and the minute he got on camera, he was Mr. Sweetness. Never, ever made a mistake. How do you filter that? How do you keep that little brain put to sleep? It's awareness, number one. Once you really learn some, some of the tools that uh, what recognize yourself, what pushes your button? What is, what's your pet peeve? What are the things that really bother you that, that make you say something? Maybe it's somebody uh, grabbing their cell phone while they're talking to you and, and texting or something, and you feel like you want to say something, or if you say something, you're going to be maybe saying the wrong thing. It's recognizing those things inside you that, that set you into little brain mode and, and, and maybe put you in an area where you're going to say the wrong thing. You and I are one-on-one -on -one here, but in the social media world, Facebook, uh, Twitter and when people are texting back and forth it's a whole different ballgame is it not and it's more important than ever now because of social media and because of the how fast we can say the wrong thing and get it to the entire world you know right away and if you've watched some Twitter comments over the last year from celebrities are really good at this sometimes as they, they they tweet something out without having the information and they have to come back and apologize that's a great point on social media because right now everything you say in social media can and will be used against you in social media because it stays it doesn't it, go away it's a legacy to virtually everything we we say now and virtually everything we say is recorded somewhere somehow and so everything you say is going to come back in a, in a positive way if you're using a big brain and in a very negative way if you're using a little brain. You also lose the little nuances, the hand gestures, the eyes, the you know the personal stuff, the, uh, the body language I guess that uh, that goes along with just having a conversation. It's a perfect point. Tone is probably the thing that's lost uh, initially that you don't understand if somebody sends you a text or an email. If you ever get an email from somebody, you go, what is their problem? Yeah, right? exactly. And then you want to retort back, and it's like that's the time when you got to slow down, let your big brain catch up, and take over the control of that, of that conversation. Because what will happen is if you get something like that, if a little brain sets you off or a, a little brain email sets you off, you, you're likely to fire right back with your own little brain, and that's when you get yeah, in trouble. Yeah, that's when you're in deep trouble. Yeah, put the filter on, hold back. <laughs> take a day and then uh, exactly feel about it a little bit uh, being a good communica uh, communicator is uh, being a good listener too right absolutely uh, um, and how do you become a better listener first recognize every conversation you're going into that the other person has something to say right. and they want to say it 
And, and if you listen to what they want to say, you're going to have a much better conversation. But start with the idea that the other person has a lot they want to get out. You may have a lot you want to get out. But if you get into a dual uh, monologue where they're saying what they're saying and you're saying what you're saying, nobody's listening, all you've got is monologues. You don't have a dialogue. Right. You've got to be able to soak it up a little bit. Absolutely. Well, the book uh, is terrific. You've got another one coming out, too. What's yes, that? the next one is going to be on relationships. Relationships. Yeah. Okay. Well, Big brain um, versus little brain. Well, if you're a boss, it's a great book. If you're just a person, it's a good book to better communicate with everybody. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you, Frank. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like more information, you can log on to bigbrain.com. Nice and easy. Back with more Bay Sunday right after the break. Stay right there.